रामाय राम भद्राय रामचंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय पत ए नम उत्तराखंड चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन ब्रह्म स्पेशल इंस्ट्रक्शन टू रावणा रेसिटेशन बिगिन नाउ Those two Brahmanas having departed, Ravana, the Lord of Rakshasas, proceeded at first by aerial way ten thousand leagues. He then went to the excellent upper aerial region where live perpetually Gandharas gifted with many accomplishment. The extent thereof is also counted by ten thousand leagues, and there are stationed closely three classes of clouds, namely Agniya, Pakshaja, and Brahma. He then proceeded to the third excellent aerial region, where perpetually reside the high-minded siddhas and charanas, and the extent whereof is also ten thousand leagues. O slayer of enemies, Ravana then speedily proceeded to the fourth aerial region, where perpetually dwell the goblins and vinayakas. He quickly went to the fifth aerial region, which also extends over ten thousand yojanas, where exists Ganga, the former of rivers, and the elephants headed by Kumuda, who pour down waters. They sport in the waters of Ganga and pour down her holy waters. And those waters, parched by the rays of the sun and softened by the wind, pour down holy waters and dews. O Raghava. Thereupon, that Rakshasa went to the sixth aerial region, O thou gifted with high radiance, which also extends over ten thousand yojanas, and where dwells Garuda, perpetually respected of his kinsmen and friends. He then went to the seventh aerial region, which is ten thousand leagues above, and where dwell the seven rishis. And again, going up ten thousand leagues, he reached the eighth aerial region, where Ganga, known as the Ganges of the sky, having strong currents and sending high roars and upheld by air, is situated on the sun's way. I shall now describe the region higher than that where resides the moon, and the extent whereof is counted by eighty thousand leagues. There dwells the moon, encircled by stars and planets, from whom proceed hundreds and thousands of rays, which light up the worlds and conduce to the pleasure of all animals. Thereupon, beholding the Shigriva, the moon, as if burnt him down speedily with his cold, fiery rays, and stricken with the fear of those rays, his counsellors could not stand them. Thereupon, exclaiming his victory, Prahasta said to Ravana, "O king, we are destroyed by cold, so we must go away from here. The Rakshasas have been terrified by the rays of the moon. O foremost of kings, the cold rays of the moon have the natural property of fire in them." Hearing the words of Prahasta, Ravana, beside himself with wrath, having uplifted his bow and twanged it, began to assail him with narachas. Thereupon, Brahma came speedily to the region of the moon and said, "O ten-necked one, O thou having mighty arms, O direct son of Vishravas, O gentle one, do thou repair hence speedily. Do not oppress the moon, for this highly fulgent king of twice-born ones wisheth well-being unto all." I shall communicate to thee a mystical incantation. He who recollects it at the time of death does not come by it. Being thus addressed. The Shigriva, with folded hands, said, "If thou art pleased with me, O God, O Lord of the worlds, O thou of great penances, if dost thou wish to communicate that incantation, do thou impart it upon me, O thou of great piety." Reciting which, O great one, I may be released of the fear of the celestials. For so, by thy favor, O Lord of celestials, I shall be invincible by all the asuras, dhanvas, and the birds. Being thus accosted, Brahma said to the ten-necked one, "O Lord of Rakshasas, do thou recite it at the time of death and not every day. Taking a string of beads, thou shouldst recite this holy incantation, on which thou, O Lord of Rakshasas, shalt be invincible. And if dost thou not recite it, thou shalt not meet with success." Here I shall communicate to thee the incantation, O foremost of Rakshasas, reciting which thou shalt obtain victory in the encounter. 
salutation unto thee, O God, O Lord of gods, O thou worshipped of the celestials and asuras, O thou identical with past and future, O great God, O thou having red eyes, thou art a boy, albeit thou assumest the form of an old man, thou wearest tiger skin, O God, you art worthy of being worshipped and the Lord of the three worlds. Thou art Hara, Harita Nemi, Yuganta Dahaka, and Baladeva. Thou art Ganesha, Lokashambhu, Lokapala, and of huge arms. Thou art great, the holder of a huge dart, having dreadful teeth, and the greatest of gods. Thou art time, the strength, and hast blue neck and a large belly. Thou art the destroyer of the celestials, the foremost of the ascetics, and the lord of all created beings. Thou art the holder of a dart and hast the bull as thy emblem, art the leader, protector, and destroyer, and the preserver. Thou hast bearded locks, art mundi, shikandi, hast a crown, and art greatly illustrious. Thou art the Lord of sprites and goblins, the soul of all, the protector of all, omniscient, the destroyer of all, the creator and the eternal preceptor. Thou art Lord, carriest a kamandalu in thy hand, art the holder of a pinaka and durjati. Thou art worthy of veneration, the most excellent Om, the first chanter of summon, the death, the element of death, parijatra, and observant of penances. Thou art an ascetic, livest in a cave, and carest a veena, panava, and quiver in thy hands. Thou art immortal, and art like the newly risen sun to behold. Thou livest in a cremation ground, art the illustrious Lord of Uma, and above all blemishes. Thou didst approve the eyes of Vagadeva and the teeth of Pusha. Thou art the destroyer of fever, holdest mace in thy hand, and art the very dissolution and time. Thou hast got a firebrand in thy mouth, hast fire as thy emblem, art highly resplendent, and the lord of men. Thou art mad, makest people tremble, art the fourth and most respected of men. Thou art a dwarf, Vamanadeva, and the dwarf who circumambulates the east. Thou art a beggar, wearest the semblance of a beggar, and art by nature crooked. Thou didst assail Indra's hands and the Vasus. Thou art the season, the maker of seasons, time honey, and hast honeyed eyes. Thou art a tree bearing fruits and blossoms, hast arrows as thy seed, and worshipped by people of all conditions perpetually. Thou art the protector and the creator of the universe, the Purusha, eternal and certain. The Lord of all regions, Virupaksha, the three qualities and the protector of all beings. Thou art three-eyed, assumest many forms and brilliant as the Ajuta sons. Thou art the Lord of all celestials, the foremost deity and wearest bearded locks, having the impressions of the moon. Thou art connected with Brahman, worthy of being resorted to and identical with all created beings. Thou blowest all bugles, severest all ties, thou dost charm and bind all and dost always bring about death. Thou hast flowery teeth, art a division, the foremost and the destroyer of all. Thou hast dreadful beards, holdest a bow, art fearful and gifted with dreadful might. These eight hundred holy and excellent names have been uttered by me which removes all iniquities are holy and offer shelter to those who seek for it. If do thou recite them, O ten-necked one, thou shalt be able to destroy thy enemies. Mangalam Koshlendraya Mahaniya Kunavdiya Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarvabhumaya Mangalam